Good morning, everybody. Hi. Hey, it's Becky from Power Tools with Thread. <laughs> it's balmy, 27 degrees here in South Texas. It's colder. I saw somebody's from Bastrop. Y'all got 19 up there. Brr, and there's frost on the ground. Usually first thing in the morning, we let the dogs out. I go outside with them. I just watched them from the other side of the door. I'm like, y'all go on, do your thing. <laughs> hey, everybody. Hi, it's Becky from Power Tools with Thread, and you are in our Stitchuation room. This is a Monday through Friday virtual stitching retreat where we just stitch. Uh, we might sort, we might cut, we might tidy, we might just sit and visit. So it is great to see everybody here. Kim's got snow. Uh, I want to give Janice from North Carolina a nice welcome. She's made her first Stitchuation room, so welcome. Glad you're here. We've got a virtual kitchen on the other side of the room, and Jude, I saw, has donuts over there, and I'm pretty sure there's coffee and juice, maybe some hot chocolate. So all, lots of goodies over there. It's a, it's just for fun, you guys. There's no other website you need to run to. <laughs> that confuses so many people. <laughs> it's so funny. It's great to see you all. Oh, you're welcome, Janice. Everyone is welcome here in the situation room. It's just so nice uh, to be around like-minded people who, uh, you know, we just all enjoy the same thing. And it's just a wonderful group of folks. I hope you guys had a wonderful weekend. We just found out the, um, the MLK March is uh, usually held in San Antonio every year. And they just announced on the news that it's canceled. There's thousands and thousands of people that come here for that. They had to cancel it because you guys, it, it, there's some, um, I live a little South of San Antonio and um, I've got, uh, frost. Not, what's it called? And there might be sleet falling. Yeah. It's cold. It was the 15th of January in 1985. Was it the 15th? We got 15 inches of snow. Something. It might have been the 13th, but it, it's January, February is always the worst. I had a very, very busy weekend stitching you guys. Lots and lots to do. Um, yeah, y'all hit the thumbs up on the video if you wouldn't mind. Uh, it tells YouTube that you guys like the content and that's very helpful to me. And then if you have not yet, please subscribe to the channel. We do a lot of fun things here. So, um, <clears throat> all right. So I've already hit record y'all. So we're good. So up here, I had to turn my quilt. This is American pie from QT fabrics and it was a quilt of the month block of the month. And Houston's MR, MLK parade was postponed too. Okay, Cassie. Yeah, it's just too cold, you guys. So I, I had it because my design board is short. I couldn't put the fourth. This is reclaimed barn wood down here. So this is my design board. I had to put the fourth row over here, but I had to turn it because it was messing with my head on um, what which block to put my sashing. So I had to turn it and then I just put the bottom row over on the other side. But I got the first row up here. This is not tight. This is going to be a problem. Here we go. That row on top, I got the sashing in there. I don't know if you can see it. See the sashing in between? So that's done on that row. That turned out real nice. <clears throat> Diane, I hope everything went well for you. I'm glad you're here. Diane's down in Australia. I met her on a sew and sail cruise. She came up to hang with us. So that was cool. So <clears throat> the white fabric in this quilt is a white on white. Uh, I've got it. Well, I've got a strip of it. Here's a piece of the sashing right here. And halfway through the quilt, Kay, I don't know if she's here yet this morning. She sent me this black light because I was fussing about not being able to tell the right side of the white because it's a white on white. So check this out. See no dots. See dots. There we go. So I keep this black light next to my sewing, uh, sewing machine right now so that I can know which way these work. But I did spend um, a bit of time this weekend flipping around, 
five blocks. <laughs> I had five different squares. And fortunately, four of them were a, a little outside unit, like right here in the corner. So that was handy. I didn't have to worry about that. <laughs> one of them, um, one of them was in the middle and I ended up now one of them, you know, in the middle of something, I had to take a little bit, deconstruct it a little bit more. Oh, you guys are talking about using your black lights. You got to have them. Yeah. Got to have it with white on white fabric. And one of the blocks that there's still one that's backwards in this quilt and I am not turning it around. I'm not. Cause I'd have, to, it would take me too much time. And if I put it back together, it wouldn't look as good as it does now. I'd have to completely remake the block and I'm just not up for that. So that's going to be uh, our secret. <laughs> oh, Carrie, you made the luggage tags on two different machines and they turned out crappy. That's unfortunate. That's too bad. You've been here for, Oh, you're going home tomorrow. She's in the hospital. Diane's in the hospital. She had, so we don't want, to, Oh, now I can take this off. So I was bundled up yesterday. Oh my goodness. Bundled up. So this is nice and warm. They asked us to conserve our energy. We got an email last night from ERCOT saying conserve your energy. Mm. Yeah. Okay. We're not talking about that here. So also this weekend, I'm in the middle now of a, um, oh, I got flat hair. I'm doing the, uh, with you guys, we're doing the, uh, Becky, get your brain in order. Okay. We're doing the Kimber Bell mini quilt series and we're working on February's. So, uh, I've got this part done. This was the homework was to get these done. And we're going to do this live today. We're going to finish this up today at 1 PM central. So these just turned out so cute. Look at that. Isn't that adorable? Just adorable. Absolutely love it. But you guys, I got to tell you, so I did the gentleman bird because there's a lady bird and a gentleman bird. And I did the gentleman bird. Oh, here's the lady bird right here. Isn't she cute? She's got a little gold crown. On the multi-needle, I did most of these on the multi-needle. Only the lady bird was done on the single needle. And where did that go? I wanted to show you guys what happened. I did not get, so on the multi-needle, you can put that hoop in either way, you know, 180 degrees, you can turn it and the hoop fits, but, oh, here he is. <clears throat> on the hoop, there's these little buttons that fit into the holes on the, um, the dime eight by 10 monster snap hoop, which is what I used. And I wasn't paying attention after the last trim and I had a hot mess and the registration got completely off. So I had to make him again, but so check this out. Look how much fabric is below the bottom stitching. See that? And then you can't tell cause I cut it off. I was trying to salvage it, but I couldn't. This piece of fabric right here was just hanging out big flap right there. And then I had to use a Sharpie and I tried to color in because this was all white right here below that. The whole thing was off. It was crazy how bad it was. So I remade him. This guy. Fail. And then I didn't have enough background fabric of this fabric. So I had to go searching in my stash. I found one that's pretty commensurate and it looks good. It's a white on white and it looks good. So, oh, good. Marge is ready. Her CD is supposed to come in the mail tomorrow. Well, good for you. That's great. But, um, you know, yeah. And look at the top, how the fabric at the top of the wing didn't meet the stitching. Well, this, the, the fabric was there first. The stitching didn't meet the fabric is what happened. And no, he no, he doesn't look good. <laughs> you guys are being kind. No, he doesn't look good. 
just unsalvageable and not to my standard. So, you know, sometimes if it's off a tiny bit and I can make it work with, you know, coloring in a Sharpie or doing something, I'll, I'll live with it. I, I'm not a perfectionist in, by any um, means, but his, uh, his second go was much better. So these things happen and it's my own fault, user error, because I did not pay attention because I was looking at him and I'm like, why, why was he off? And usually when it's off just a little tiny bit like this on the multi-needle, it's because that monster snap hoop was not seated properly in the, in the clamp. So it's my fault. Really easy to do. I've done it before. So that's how I kind of know what that is. I know what it looks, use them as a mug rug. Yeah, I could. I could. I know I hate to throw the, anything away. It's so funny. I've got more ugly block mug rugs around here. <laughs> and it's so funny because those are the things that usually land here and stay. Those ugly things. It's too funny. But I went ahead and got, um, but I just kept him out to show you guys. Okay. And then I went ahead and got the binding strip made up. So we're ready to put the binding on. And then I got the backing cut. It's ready to go. Okay. So I got the backing cut and ready. And then I'm using my triangle. This is a 10 inch square folded into half or, you know, one triangle and then another triangle. And so the raw edges go up inside the binding on the top. And then you just stitch down the point and that is my hanging sleeve. And so that'll work really well. So I'm ready to go for this. I've trimmed all the blocks up and got everything done except for the new gentleman bird block. <clears throat> Now you've got to center these blocks and I'm going to talk to you guys about this this morning. Uh, I'm not worried about saving it, Cece. I'm not. It's fine. So like they want you to center these blocks and square them up to three and a half inches. Okay. I want to show you guys a little tip. Uh, I did mine using a three and a half inch square centering ruler. This is from Creative Notions Quilt Shop out of Utah. Okay. So what you can do, you can take a piece of cardboard. This is from like a cereal box or this is actually a folder, cardboard folder. And you can see my lines. I just drew a three and a half inch block on here. And, um, Outside of the three and a half inch square, I, one inch away, I drew another set of lines, okay? And then cut the three and a half inch square out and then cut these lines. So now I have a centering, you know, I can use a centering template. All right, so the idea is now, <clears throat> you just set this over where you want it to be Okay. And then you would use like a fine line friction marker or chalk or something and draw all along. You'll draw all along the inside and then you can trim to that size. So, you know, you don't have to, well, hi, Debbie, it's your first time live. What's the name of this kit? This is, um, a Lori Holt group had a post about her mentioning a mini printer. Does anyone know of this printer? No, Sue, I don't know of it. So the name of what I'm making right now are the Kimberbell mini quilts. We're doing February's. Okay. And this has been, this is a free sew along that I'm doing with you guys. I have links below to all the stuff that I'm talking to you about. If you would use my links, I'd appreciate it. That helps out the, uh, the channel a whole lot. So can I use orange pop rulers? Absolutely, Lori, you can use orange pop rulers. And orange pop rulers are a Kimberbell product. They're great. They're sturdy plastic. And they've got slots in the ends of both. As you go around, you cut around the inside with your rotary cutter. And it's got slots that allow you to get that rotary cutter up in there for a clean cut. Well, if you don't have those, 
and I'm not going to be talking about these today on the finish, you guys. This is this is for y'all. This is from me to you, okay? In this method, because there's no gap for the rotary cutter in these corners, you would just take a fine line marker and mark it, okay? Because you're going to cut right on that line, and it'll go in the seam allowance, so it won't be seen anyway. Just a little tip. So lots of options out there. You know, I... I I know a lot of you are on a limited budget and you're like, I can't afford $70 for orange pop rulers. Well, you can make your own. Okay. You just have to use them a little bit differently, but yeah. And I, I know this, this one's perfect because my, my three and a half inch creative notion centering ruler fits perfectly in there. Okay. So, Oh, the double, the love kit is sold out Sharon. Oh, I'm sorry. See, I was going to talk to you guys about that too. It was so funny. She was like, we don't, well, they'll make more. They will make more because we're not sewing that until the 23rd. That uh, the double the love kit is from two chicks quilting in Ganado. And they have a load of, um, I saw them cutting Valentine fabrics. If, but see what they'll do is they'll put up another colorway. And then that way, you know, yours isn't going to look exactly like mine, but you have the fabrics in order to cut it. And what she's talking about do I have the picture? I don't have the picture. Yeah, I do right here. Okay. See the picture. Now this is a sweet pea. Double the love. It's upside down. The double the love table runner. This is super scrappy, adorable, cute, super adorable. So I, um, I spent the weekend getting these stitched out as well. We're doing this on the 23rd of January and I'm just getting ahead because, you know, we, we're not, we don't have the time on a live to do the whole thing, but we will do a block of applique and I will show you how to put them all together. So I spent the weekend stitching these out. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? And I used the uh, Friday on the multi-needle going over the Kimber Bell when we did the hearts on Friday. I went through <laughs> El Favor, that little gentleman bird, he kinda, he's kind of poochy, isn't he? <laughs> um, yeah, so I spent the time with you on Friday for single end multi-needle users to talk to you about using embroidery software to streamline your workflow so that all of your placement lines were put down at one time. Then you can pull the hoop, iron all your pieces on, or you can cut them all at one time and then trim them. And then it just streamlines everything. So hi, Yolanda. It's her first live. Welcome. You're in Germany. Oh yeah. Well, you guys are used to that. <clears throat> it's cold everywhere, you guys. <laughs> There's cinnamon rolls. Oh, my goodness. So I used the embroidery software to pop two of these. These are the, this is the five by seven size. Okay. And I used the embroidery software to put two of them in here. And then, so it stitched the placement lines for, and tack down is all in one with sweet pea. They don't do separate ones with sweet pea. Kimber Bell give you separate ones, placement and a tack down. Sweet Pea, they only give you one stitch. So they expect you to put the everything down at one time. So tack down all the fabrics at once. And then the placement line for the large hearts. Pulled it, ironed on, ironed on. Because I cut all of these on the scan and cut. So that was very handy. The table runner size... Um, Sarah, it depends on the size that you make. You can make a five by seven, a six by 10 or an eight by 12. So it's up to you. Okay. And then here's the other one. There's another set of blocks, adorbs, and then another set of blocks. Nice, cute. These are cute. So much fun, you guys. So much fun. I put... I put Spanky to work this weekend. Spanky's my brother, PR 1055, 10 needle. We had a little issue with a wiper error, but we made it through it fine. So it was all good. 
minus the five by seven. This is pretty good size. So there's six blocks together. And then it's going to have, <clears throat> they give you the finished size in the pattern. I don't have it in front of me. And then it has, see, there's little hearts up above and below each of the center, the big hearts in the middle on the edges. And then it has two edges. And then it looks like a turn and flip backing. It's, there's no binding to it. So that's cool. Still working on that. Yeah, the, the five by seven to me was big enough. The amount of fabric you get is large enough for two cuts of an eight by 12 on one fat quarter. And you get a little note in the package to tell you how to cut it. And then the package also contains, this is what they're doing. Hold on here. I've got my, oh, I've got stuff everywhere over here. So you get 13 fat quarters. Okay. This is what's in the kit. You get 13 fat quarters. You get your end borders fabric and your backing. And it all comes tagged. I love that about two chicks. They're great. But it's designed for the eight by 12. Now, if you only make the five by seven, then you're going to have lots of extra left over for another Valentine project, which I think is awesome. So it's very cool. Very, very cool. Oh, here's the Here's the white on white I made of the gentleman bird, the new one, because the first one didn't work out. And it's got like that floral. See that? It'll be fine. The main thing is that it coordinates with these whites, regardless of the pattern. And I didn't choose any. that The one they had was geometric, but so... You've got East Tennessee. You've got snow, Judy. Yeah, I was talking to my mom last night. She lives in Camden. And um, I asked her, I said, you got snow? She says, no. This is about 830. She says, no. And um, she had just gotten out of the shower. And then we hung up and then she called me right back and she said, it snowed while I was in the shower. <laughs> I didn't know it when I was talking to you. But. Okay. Yeah. This was a great weekend. You joined late. What is this project and by whom? This is the Kimberbell mini quilts. Okay. So this is two different projects I'm talking about. This one is the Kimberbell mini quilts. What that looks like. I've got links to all this below you guys. Kimberbell. Um, I've got links to my girlfriend's quilt shop. They're out of them. They're supposed to get new ones this week and ship them out. Okay. So this is the one for January. Chilling with my snoomies. So this is the one we made for January and then it's got the backing and that's my little triangle hanging sleeve. I'll show you guys how to do that. And then, um, Becky, your stellaire is showing almost all of the top thread on the back and is not making a smooth satin stitch. It is a tension issue, Robin. Yes. So that means the tension on if your top threads being pulled to the back, Give that Bob in a quarter turn, Lucy, lefty Lucy. Not, I mean, just a dink, not, not even a, don't do that. Just eat just a tiny bit. Give that a shot. There is, there's a test in your embroidery machine. Jason does it all the time and I always forget what it is, but there's a test in your embroidery machine that will run a bunch of eyes <clears throat> It just, oh, on a single needle, it'll run an I, a capital I, and it allows you to just stitch one and pull it out and take a look at the back. So can I show what I mean, Robin? What was that? What was I talking about that you want me to show? Oh, your aunt lives in Camden, Kathy. Yeah, nice. I got on the Camden Facebook page yesterday um, to look around because her husband just passed. She's 81. Oh, the bobbin. Um, yeah, so she's 81 and, um, let me pull gypsies out so that I can show you what I'm talking about. Um, 
and she's like, oh, I'm going to have to go out and, you know, i got to mow the grass and I'm going to have to dust the snow off the car and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, ah, I don't want her out there on that ice. So I need my glasses. I put some over here yesterday thinking I probably won't need these, but just in case. <laughs> so on your bobbin case, you've got two. Let me see. You got two little screws. See that? You got two little screws on your bobbin case. Okay. The one, one of them, this one, on this one, one of them looks like a Phillips. The other one is standard. Can you see that? I, I'm not showing. There. Right there. See that standard screw? Quarter turn. Not a lot. You do very microscopic touches with this. Don't fiddle. You always do this tension first, top tension last on, his, um, on these domestic. Okay. Your aunt's 81. Well, they ought to hang out at the senior center. <laughs> My mom won't go to a senior center. And see the purple dot? That's an embroidery. This is designed for embroidery. It's a green dot or no dot, it's for sewing. And that may cause an issue as well. So switch to the purple dot bobbin case, try that. And if that doesn't fix it, then quarter turn. But these are uh, configured so that your bobbin thread will work right away in them. So Yeah, your repair guy said not to touch those screws. Right. Don't touch the one that looks like a Phillips. That holds pieces, parts and pieces onto the case itself. But you're, well, you know what? He doesn't want you to touch it because if it goes wrong, then you have to call him. Hmm? <laughs> and bring your machine in for money. You guys learn to do these things yourselves, okay? Don't be afraid. You're not going to mess it up. But, you know, worst case, buy yourself another bobbin case. It's 15 bucks, Ugh, whatever. If you feel like it's just beyond and you can't figure out the tension. But that's the thing is that little screw. I'm trying to figure out exactly where it is in relation. Uh, this is on brother and baby lock machines. Okay. It's the one that's farthest from the little white dot where you put the bobbin case back in. It's farthest. It's back over here. That one. That is designed for you to be able to adjust the tension in your embroidery machine, bobbin. And you always do that first. Then run a capital I. That's really a good test. Three weeks without your machine, Kathy. Ooh. Girl, I'd have to have a backup for that. There's just no way. What's the reason for adjusting the screw in the bobbin case? She's having a bad stitch. <laughs> she says, you're telling Becky. <laughs> yeah, a lot of times your, your repair people will tell you not to do things or whatever. And y'all, you're not going to make it any worse than, than what it is right now. Go out on YouTube, type in your problem, and let somebody show you how to fix your problem, okay? You guys need to be self-sufficient. Save yourself some money, but they would love for you to run your machine in, you know. Of course they do. That's just me. Yeah, just take a little turn. That's right. Carla, if you're Carla, if your tension is wrong in your green dot case, you can fix that. <laughs> They're all designed. For you to be able to adjust the tip. What do you think your technician's going to do when he gets it back in the shop? He's going to take a quarter turn on that and fix the tension and hand it back to you with a bill, right? That's exactly what he's going to do. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're not comfortable with that and you're made out of money, by all means, roll it into the shop. It'll be fine. <laughs> If the screw was not meant for you to fiddle with it, 
it would have Loctite on it so you couldn't move it. Right? Yeah. I tell you what, I've saved myself a load of money by disassembling my machine and looking for a piece of a needle. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're, if your dealer's far away, yeah, you don't want to. So go through. Um, yeah. If your dealer's far away, you don't want to make that drive. And a lot of times they'll tell you, oh, you know, I've got a six week backlog. Now you're without your machine for six weeks for a tiny little tension issue that you could probably troubleshoot yourself. Make a quarter turn, righty tighty, lefty loosey. But the trick is to know which way to turn the screw, right? So if you've got too much color on the underside, that means the bobbin tension is too tight and it's pulling everything too tightly under. If you've got loops on the top, your bobbin tension is too loose. Right? So. He put nail polish on yours to hold it tight. Lori, uh, I would buy a new bobbin case. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. Story time with CC says to go ahead and rethread the whole machine. Just start from scratch. You'd be surprised. You miss one single thread guide and it's like makes a difference. So do that first. Hi, Katie. Katie sent me a picture of her back patio furniture this weekend and it had 12 inches of snow on top of the table. And I said, oh, no, you can keep that. <laughs> no, thank you. Goodness. Okie dokie. Uh, I think that's all. Those are the projects I worked on this weekend. When I was sewing in my so tight's backings into my leaders on my long arm. I broke a needle. I hit the metal base inside of that leader. Bam. And it broke. <laughs> Gil. Is is it G-U-I-L-0-1-2-3-4? Gil. Yeah. I'm just going to tell you guys like it is. Okay. Y'all, if you, if you don't have a clue how to do something, type your problem into YouTube search bar. And some videos will come up. I call it YouTube University for a reason. So just give it a shot. Because believe me, whatever you do is exactly what your technician is going to do. Okay. Um, oh, George is your name. Okay, George. Yeah. Awesome. Well, welcome. Yeah, I, I do. I'm going to tell you guys like it is. A technician's going to do exactly that. They're going to give it a quarter turn and hand you the machine back with a bill. And there's no point in doing you doing that. You can do that yourself. And if you mess it up, foobar, then just then send it into the tech and let him undo <laughs> whatever you did. Him or her. I don't mean to. Yeah. You're going to do the triangle things on a wall hanging you're working on. That's wonderful. Yes. And Joyce is right. You can learn everything on YouTube, YouTube University. There's a how to. My husband fixed our washing machine on uh, because of YouTube videos. There, uh, there was a technician who worked, you know, he's a washing machine repair guy. He has a business doing that. And he did a video on how to replace the bearings in a front loader and an LG front loader, my exact model. So Keith did it and it works. Your favorite teacher is Becky Thompson. <laughs> oh, Margie, teacher's pet. <laughs> so this morning I was going to stitch. I'm just going to do one row a day on, um, on this. So I was going to do that. And then I've got to get back onto the long arm and get it figured out. I, I have yet to play with the pro stitcher. I've got the King Quilter 2 from Sew Machines Plus. And I uh I've got to I gotta get savvy with that. So after I broke the needle, I replaced the needle. And then I was trying to stitch a plumb line to get the top straight on the backing and batting. And I went to pull the thread at the end and it, the whole thing came up. And I was like, so I did it again and I had the same result. And I said, mm-hmm might have the needle in backwards. So that might be a problem. Oh yeah, there's Facebook groups for that too. Yeah, there are some idiots on YouTube. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. What I do is I look for the, the people that have a business and then they tell you 
what they do in their business. or so they'll show you how to do something that that's their reputation. So they're not going to do, be careful. Yeah. Who you watch. I don't have a business, but I'm telling you fix your own, adjust your own tension in all of your bobbin cases and all of your machines, adjust your own tension if you can. <laughs> okay. Anyway, the chickens, I heard them clucking this morning, so they're not frozen. They're fine. We had to take their waterer out. It uh, It's on a water hose, and then as the water level dips, you know, it refills. It has a float in it. That was going to freeze. I told my husband, get that out of there. And um, I might have knocked the timing off when I broke the needle. Really, Betty Boop? And that would cause all oh, that makes sense. And that's why it's not picking up the bobbin thread. Thanks. This is why I have my repair guy on speed dial <laughs> to come over here. I'm not fiddling with the timing. That's beyond me. I know my limitations and that you're probably right. Your chicken water has a heater in it. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, we don't live in an area where I could do that. Oh. I don't know. I mean, I could put a heater in there, but 11 months out of the year, it's worthless. We don't need it. So, y'all, they don't even sell heated water, chicken waterers down here. No, they do. <laughs> Okay. I thought about putting the needle in the eye at 530 and see if that. You have retimed your long arm, Beth. I might look at it and see. Yeah, I'm not taking the beast to the shop, CC. That is probably exactly what happened. Yeah. It was right at the end and I hit it and it just went, you know, and it kind of and then it stopped. And that's because me, I was holding the button. I'm like, ah, I don't know what I'm doing. So, oh, you guys, Betty Boop is working on quilting, getting to know Hugh. It is gorgeous. That's a quilt by Nancy Rink. Okay, I'll check the bobbin case for a dent. I got to show you guys. What she is up to. Oh, look at that. Look at that quilting. That's what she's up to on getting to know Hugh. Isn't that gorgeous? That is beautiful. You did the timing. Is there background quilting? You're buying clear blue tiles this week. On what I'm working on, there is background quilting. You may... Uh, the very, now the January one, she's talking about the Kimberbell mini quilts. I use the clear blue tiles to background quilt. I use the winter design in clear blue tiles. I've got a link to it below you guys to the clear blue tiles. I also have a video on how to use these. So there's lots of options. You might find background quilting designs from another digitizer you might have a background quilting design already in your fancy machine if you have one of those. Yeah, Betty Boop does good work, you guys. She does beautiful work. I told you guys she's a master quilter. You don't listen to me. <laughs> yeah, she does beautiful work. The feather border is quilt path. Mm-hmm. Oh, Sue, thanks. You and Your Sewing Machine by Bernie Tobish is a great book. Okay, I might look into that. Get that sent here. Yeah, Betty does. Betty Boop does good work. So, got an email from Quilts, Inc. They're doing an all-call for red, white, and blue quilts for an exhibit for Houston this year. And I looked at, the, <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm going, huh, it's 
not for a judging. It's just an exhibit. But the, the quilt has to read red white, red, white, and blue. And they need it. They need photos and everything of it by May. And so I was looking at this and I was like, huh. <laughs> That's what I thought, Connie. I thought, oh. I mean, I've never, ever, ever done anything like that, ever. And, oh, I was going to finish it anyway. But then I was like, well, I don't know how to quilt it. And my friend Dana said, send it to Lisa to quilt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, oh, Betty Boop, uh, we don't have any rulers in the store right now. Uh, they've been sold out a long time. My son makes the ruler racks, the one behind me. He makes these and um, they're in our stores. Road trip to help. There you go. <laughs> She's like, what? <laughs> Come on now. Don't you want to have your quilting in an exhibit in Houston? <laughs> yeah. It, it's just for an exhibit, you guys. It's not a judged, it's not for judging at all. But um, uh, Donna, if you, on YouTube, just up, up in the search bar on YouTube, how to use Kimberbell clear blue tiles, my video pops up number one or two. You'll find it. So yeah, you'll find how to do that. I told you guys, you can learn anything on YouTube. <laughs> so I am going to finish this quilt. I am going to finish it. I just, so now if it goes in and is a pantograph good enough? Because that's all I can do is pantographs. Yeah. Flo gets her hubby to do her background, her quilting. That's great. Yeah. Anyway. Lisa's going, ah. <laughs> she's going to have to turn that quilt on her frame too. And she's not happy about that, but I will finish it. I will finish it. Yeah. I'm going to, I'll finish this. That's why I said, so I'm going to do, I did the first row sashing yesterday and I'll do this row sashing today. So it's going to be done. The quilt top's going to be finished. Probably we leave for the coast on Thursday. So if not this week, then beginning of next week, it'll be finished. Is the Heart Table Runner a beginner-friendly project? Yes, Shannon, it sure is. It is beginner-friendly. It's much easier than it looks. So, and I'm going to take you through how to do the applique on one of the blocks. One of the little, we're going to do a little heart block together. But that gives you, um, Why do I use clear blue tiles and mini quilts and not block by block, block by block? So what Robin is talking about, uh, clear blue tiles is quilting only and block by block has frame, has a frame around it. Okay. There are no, yes, uh, there's a border on American pie. It's only so, it's not that wide. It's the white on white. It's nothing fancy. Yeah. I know, Joya. I should do that. I'll just, because I can't. I'm not telling you which block is wrong. <laughs> I'm not telling you that. But I sent it to Lisa and she couldn't see it. So I think I'm going to leave it the way it is. So clear blue tiles. Okay. Let me see if I can. It's got two different quilting designs in it. It has block by block, which will give you this outer frame. See that outer line stitching? Okay. And then the clear blue tiles ver designs give you just background quilting with no outer frame. So 
So for instance, when you're trying to make a, let's say you have a five by seven hoop and the background quilting for the block by block in the five by seven, they want you to use a six by six. It won't fit, but you can use the clear blue tile background quilting and it will fit. You can use the, this, this lady had a six by 10 hoop. Is that right? Is she, anyway, you can just get rid of the, the, you can get rid of the outer frame and you, it, it allows you the freedom to just stitch what you need where you need it. So the idea of clear blue tiles is they don't have an outer frame and that way, so those are meant to be trimmed with orange pop rulers. That's essentially, that's the difference. So the clear blue tiles, background stitching only is not meant to be trimmed. Those are meant to be nestled together so that they look like all over quilting on a, on a project. Can you use Designs by Juju's background quilting? Absolutely, March. Sure can. Yeah, you absolutely can. You wouldn't want to use the end to end, but you could use a, you could use, well, she's got five by seven designs. Yeah. You sure could. There's a lot of different options, you guys. So if you've got the frames, the ones with the frames are designed for you to block by block. They're designed for you to trim these out using orange pop rulers and then put everything together block by block, block by block. That's what that's designed for. How is it different than edge to edge? So edge to edge. Let me go get my clear blue tiles. You guys talk amongst yourselves. Thank you, Jenny. You're a sweetheart. I appreciate the super sticker. I'll be right back. Let me get these. Hello. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> There's a little green lizard underneath, right at the base of the cabinet that's holding these. <laughs> he's, he's keeping warm is what he's doing. He's nice and green. <laughs> he came in from the cold. He said, oh, no, I'm not doing this. All right. So this is hard because it's got the book attached completely. So if you're doing the clear blue tiles, you get an all over quilt quilting like this. This is actually the block by block. Okay. Is what they did. The idea of the clear blue tiles is for you to be able to take the same design and nestle them together. And they have these, um, I'll just use a couple. So they've got the little marks on the corners and the sides. So you, you figure out how many of these across you need your, and how many down. Okay. So when you make the little marks on the corners on your next one, you, you butt them right up to each other. So you start your needle right here on this clear blue tile and you start your needle in the center on this clear blue tile. Okay. That's how that they're supposed to nestle up. Thank you, Linda, for this sticker. I appreciate that very much. You're so generous. Thank you. So your clear blue tiles, I use these on pillows a lot. Smaller projects is what I use that for. And end to end, depending on how it's rotated, vertically or horizontal, is designed to do, I would use that on a larger quilt. This would probably be too dense for a larger quilt, but it's up to you. You're used to the block by block method on projects. Yeah, I see. I... I use both depending on what it is I'm doing. So they're designed just for different, you know, different kinds of projects.
I love my clear blue tiles too. I use them all the time, you guys. If I'm not going to put something on the long arm, I'll glad I'll grab the CBTs because it's just so much easier to just pop it in the, you know, like the so I have the expansion set. Okay, because I've got a luminaire. So the biggest hoop is 10 by 16. So I do have the expansion set as well. And that way I can use the nine by 14 or, or um, I think that's the largest size that comes in the clear blue tiles. But, and if, if this is abstract to you that don't have an embroidery machine, let me show you. I'm throwing these things all over the place. So let's say your project is... 16 by 10. Okay. Well, I could either use two. What is that the right? Yeah. Let's say your project is 16 by 18. Now, how would you use clear blue tiles for that? Okay. So you've got a big placemat or a big runner and it's not blocks, right? So it's, it's 16 by 18 or something. All right. So now I, here's the eight by eight and here's the eight by 10. So I would run these like this and I make all the marks on the project ahead of time. All right. So I do two rows, the here and here. Does that make sense? So the block by block wouldn't work when you're doing a big runner like that, because it's going to leave that margin for the frame. We're not cutting everything, anything out of a, of a runner. You know what I mean? Yeah. So now you would use your clear blue tiles on a runner or a big pillow or something, right? So this one's, neither one of them's big enough, but together they are. And when you run the same pattern in each one, so you're going to run the eight by eight pattern when you do this one and the eight by 10 pattern when you do this one. And when they get all together, the stitching on each one is so close together. They look, you can't see, you can't tell where one stopped and another started. The edge to edge designs, you have a definitive start and a stop. These don't have that. These are like a fully enclosed design. So, you know, you'll get all different designs and it kind of finishes up where it started. So it's fully enclosed, but they nestle together to look like they are all over background quilting and edge to edge starts here, does its thing and stops here. And then wants you to pick it up on the next pass. Then you move the quilt, pick it up on the next pass and it'll do it again. Same. Yeah. So they're just very handy. And the clear blue tiles has generic designs like loops and swirls that will work fine. You guys, a lot, a lot of this background quilting just disappears and you don't really see it. Now, one cool thing that Kimberbelt does, you can buy the whole set of background quilting designs for this. It's like a hundred bucks. Okay. But you get scads of sizes of designs and lots of different designs. But a lot of times they use the same designs over and over and over in different projects. For instance, the loops. These are used frequently in their projects, okay? What you can do is you can just buy, like, and this one has love. Let me see. This one has a couple of little hearts right there, and it's got some words, love, and it has more hearts and that kind of thing. So this is unique to this particular one. You can just buy this one. It's like $12, okay? And then you can go back in if you might have some from another project and you can use, dig that out. So I file all of my Kimberbell clear blue tiles. No, I file all of my Kimberbell background quilting designs that I have downloaded in the same folder. And then you can go back and look at different projects. And so I went through all of my February files. If you're not sure where they are on your machine, do a search for KBQ is the first three letter code at the beginning of all of the Kimber Bell quilting designs. That's all their background quilting. 
Kim, Kimberbell background quilting, KBQ. And then it'll have a dash and it'll have a number. And that number is unique to each individual project. Does that make sense? So I just did a search in my little yellow folder. I did a search for KBQ. Let me see if I can show you guys if it'll find it here. I'm, I'm going to do a thing and show you guys how to find these. If you've ever purchased them. Let me see if I can pull this up. And let me go to my embroidery. Yeah. Okay. Let me share my screen with you guys. Let me go to window. Here we go. Okay. So I have in my documents folder, I have embroidery. And in embroidery, this is where I file either by subject, just like a card catalog, or by author. Okay. So I can go down and I do keep most of the Kimberbell stuff together. Okay. So let me go find my Kimberbell. But what you can do is up here in the top, there's a search bar. And the, the just type KBQ. Nothing came up in the main embroidery folder because, let me hit my back arrow. Everything's, I put it all into the Kimberbell folder, right? Now we're going to search in Kimberbell. So let me see if I have anything in here. KBQ. Oh, it found them. It knows it's there. And then it said not in this main folder. So yeah, I put, um, oh, you know what? It's prop. they're probably up on, um, see how these are KD that's Kimberbell designs. Yeah. I've got it on my main desktop. These are, these are on my laptop that I'm talking to you guys on. I don't have that. So, but there's so many, let's see, I got cuties. Hmm. There's my clear blue tiles and the embroidery quilting. I go down to PES. That's what I need. So here's border loops, swirls, fall, loop, spring, summer, swirls, winter. This is what I used right here. So that's what I mean. You got block by block that has the frame and then you have clear blue tiles. Clear blue tiles doesn't have the outer frame. Okay. And so I would use, if you have a five by seven hoop, you could use the four by six winter. Oh, that's, yeah, that just popped up. Hold on a second. Let me reshare with you guys because that's not working. So I double click that. It opened it in in brilliance because I've told my computer to do that. Let me stop sharing this. Go to present, share screen, window in brilliance. Right. So this is the four by six. Okay. I have, let's say I have the five by seven frame. I'll just come over here in this, make sure my lock is on up here in the top. And I'm just going to change that to like, um, 4.75 and hit enter. And it resized it. And now it's, Nope, that's too big. That's not going to work. See, it didn't work. It went over the seven. Okay, so let's just go down to four and a half, 4.5. There we go. That will fit in my five by seven hoop. And now I've got background quilting. Isn't that cool? A lot of different ways to do things, you guys. Just got to think outside that box. Uh, you need to tell the computer, tell the computer how to open those files in your brilliance. Yes. Um, my brain. Kim, would you shoot me an email? Power tools with threaded outlook.com. I will, uh, I've got to piddle around with it to get the exact steps. I'll do a blog post on it, but if you shoot me an email, it'll remind me if you would be so kind. So you do this before the applique. Yes, ma'am. This is your background quilting, Connie. You bet. Yep. 
So essentially you're doing two designs. This is two designs in the embroidery file, in the embroidery machine. The first design was the background quilting. The second design, design was Lady Bird, okay? So it's two separate designs in order to get this done. So I loaded this one first. If you're doing it at the machine without any software, you do this one first, then you hit add, and then you bring in this gal, okay? Yeah. Yeah, you can open with and choose program, Judy. That right click, open with and choose the program. That's for that one file. There, you can go into, um, it's not preferred programs. I got, like I said, I got to think about it. There's a way for you to go into your computer and tell it every time I click on a file with that extension, open it with this program. So, are the orange pop ru rulers helpful with CBT? Um, <clears throat> oh yeah. So you, orange pop rulers are the greatest convenience in the world with the block by block designs that come in the clear blue tiles kit. Put it that way. Okay. So you started with Amelie Scott and then bought designs by Juju and everyone's saying clear blue tiles. March, get you you've got enough whatever works for you. I have all three. And I use whatever works for me for that particular project. And I didn't buy them all at one time. I got a little bit here and a little bit there. And I'm not married to any one of those. I look at them and go, which one's going to work best for my project that I'm working on today? Okay? And if I don't have it, then I go get it. I'll look at my clear blue tiles. Do the designs in the CBTs work with what I'm doing today? If they don't, then I might go over to uh, Designs by Juju and see if she's got something that'll work for me. Okay. And then I'm, it's eight bucks. No big deal. Right. Yeah. I'm doing a sew along with friends today. Wearing the same shirt you have on. Oh, good. We're twinsies, Jamie. Yay. <laughs> I needed long sleeves. It's cold. All right, you guys, our hour is up. Today was just chatting. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. Please consider subscribing. We always do lots of fun things on this channel. Uh, don't forget, join me today. We're gonna put the um, we're gonna put the cuties, we're, the finish, the, the cuties. No, the mini quilts. We're gonna put these together today and finish this up so we are ready for February, and then. Uh, I will get with two chicks quilting this morning and see if they can put together some more fat quarter bundles for you guys for the, um, for the double the love heart pattern. You guys don't have to do that. Okay. If you can't afford it, don't do it. Go into your stash. Uh, you do need to get the pattern from sweet pea, but to get the kit from two chicks quilting, if you need help with that. Uh, again, you don't have to do that. I have links to that below. So it goes, they gave me a little page on Two Chicks Quilting. I've got my own little page on their website. And that's where uh, all of the kits are for the things that I do with you guys and that they kit for me. So this has been a lot of fun. The hour has flown by. So you all have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll talk to you soon. You guys go sew something. Bye.